everybody. Oh, just getting a glimpse of my new hair. This is the first live video I've done in ages. I think I've done one this year. It has been a crazy start to the year for us here and yeah, so I'll go into more of that on another video but I just got back from spending the day at the school canteen and so my mind is on all food related stuff and I thought, you know what, I've got a little bit of time before the kids come home. So I thought while I was here thinking about food, I thought I might just show you inside my pantry so you can have a bit of a sneak peek at how I organise our pantry at home, you know, what are the stapled items that we keep in there. Hi Jo, how are you going? I'm so glad you're here live, yay. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd show you guys in my pantry. It's a little bit different to how it was a couple of years ago. I think I might have done a blog post on it a few years ago. And back then I was really into organising, hence the name Beautifully Organised. Um, but I was really into storage stuff and how I was going to place everything. And I'm still, I still really like a well organised pantry, but in real life, a lot of storage options that I used to use looked beautiful but weren't very effective. So, you know, we had a pantry moth problem for a while. I mean, I keep a relatively clean house, but this sort of stuff happens. Um, so, the fact that we've had pantry moths in the past and we have a cat and, you know, there's a lot of random stuff going on in our lives and now the kids are older and need to reach their own snacks sometimes. For that reason, I've started organising my pantry in a much simpler way. So, I'm just going to show you what I do. Uh, it's purely just my own house, how I do it. Everyone's house is different, so I'm not going to say you have to do it like I do it. I just thought sometimes it's nice to just have a peek inside somebody else's house and see how they set everything up. So if there's any pointers that you want to use um, and apply to your house, then great, go ahead and do it. If it's completely different and shocking and you're like, whoa, that wouldn't work for me, that's totally fine too. Um, if you have any questions as we go along, uh, whether you're watching live or if you're watching the recording later, that's fine. Ask questions in the comments if you want to know how I store particular stuff because if I don't answer that question live, I'll come back and answer it in the comments later anyway because I like to come back and check out our videos later on when you know the kids go to bed and we all, we actually have time to sit down and talk okay should we take a peek now my room my kitchen is not amazingly clean I'm going to show you a couple of the faults here because I think it's better you feel more normal when other people point out the stuff that isn't exactly perfect in their home this is where our school notes go it's like a magnetic key holder it's called a magneta it's really really handy and you're meant to put your mail in there but I find if I put school notes there, then they're in my face all the time and actually process them easier. But as you can see, it really needs processing right now. So sorry to my kids' school. I'm not quite up to date with notes at the moment, but I will be this week. Rest of the kitchen here above me is where we keep all the junk that I should be decluttering. Uh, hand towel. Oh, on my fridge there, you can see there's like a healthy canteen's. Um, sign on there. Uh, just ignore what's written on there because about four years ago we had a Halloween party and on there I scribbled how to cook party food and I have not changed that since. So they're all the faults of my kitchen. Let's have a look at the pantry. I'm going to flip you over. How do we do it? How do we do it? Okay, we're flipped over. I'm still holding the tripod but because I'm holding it it might be a little bit shaky. So this is my pantry. It's a walk-in. Stable doors. Feel like we should have a horse back here but you open it up and there's heaps of room in here now we're a family of four right so i'm going to walk you through shelf by shelf what we have and why we have it and all of that stuff so up the top is medicine so i like to keep them nice and high so that's where we just keep the basics so kids panadol um you know mother coal band-aids the temperature stuff in here is our pet stuff you know like the what do you call that to make them stop scratching flea treatments that's what it is we keep batteries up here in a sealed container which i need to update because i've just got a new packet this is random eucalyptus lollies that my husband gets every time he has a little cold <laughs> these are our batteries that we're going to recycle so it's not all food in here matches are kept up high random extra things. As much as I try and get rid of paper towels in our house to go zero waste, they always keep appearing. Um, oh no, hang on. I think I'm running out of... Uh oh, no I'm not. Okay, we're good. Um, I thought I was running out of signal and you were going to disappear. Alright, so toothpicks. This is the last of our plastic cutlery that we got when the girls were babies and had their christenings. We're trying to go zero waste and get rid of all these. But anyway, random stuff is on the top shelf along with a fire extinguisher. Second shelf down, we get into actual food. Hi, Marie. Say hi to everybody. So, 
In order to keep things like pantry moths at a minimum, we try really hard to contain things in airtight containers. So hence, there's crackers and rolled oats in here, banana chips and other snacks like nuts go in there. Ooh, chips are usually in a container, but I don't think they're gonna last much longer. And then, yeah, so just random stuff. These get turned over quite quickly, but normally I keep them in a bigger one of these as well. And that stops bugs from getting in. It seems my husband has brought in a little sneaky stash from the bar out the back. Here are the jars that we're recycling, but more importantly, vinegar and oil lives on this shelf. We use a lot of oil because we make a lot of bread and snacks at home. This should be in my baking box, so clearly the kids have been baking. I'll show you the baking box in a minute. And this is the paprika. We use a lot of that in our cooking. This is just some Serbian spice packets. <gasps> And it looks like my kids got into the lollies. Anyway, basically this level is for snacks, recycling, oils, condiments, that sort of thing. And then down here, this is where we keep the canned goods. Now this is my favourite part of the pantry. See these shelves here, they're tiered and you can actually extend them out as well. But basically what that means is you can see everything in the pantry at a glance because it's on tiered shelving. So you can have a little look pretty easily. Now from Howard's, these are quite expensive. I think I paid about $20, $25 for them 10 years ago or eight years ago. You can also get them at Kmart, really affordable. But the quality is, there's a lot of difference in the quality. These have kept really well. Kmart versions, I've gone through a couple already. So yeah, we just keep your standard uh, spray oil, salt, tins of beans, gravies, spices, all of that sort of stuff just goes there. And I like loose leaf tea in the teapot, so we have that too. Random packets of spices, I just corral them all together so I can take this whole thing out when I'm cooking and then put it back in. We use long life milk because we don't use a lot of it and it tends to go off when I buy it fresh. Taco kits. And of course we have a wine stash here that's easy to reach. This is one of the baking boxes. So basically this one is sugar, icing sugar. This one also holds things like sprinkles, vanilla essence, that sort of thing. I don't know if you can see in the side. Cocoa powder, coconut food coloring, all the random things that make cakes pretty go in there. And then underneath we have another baking box on the next shelf that has a few extras like baking powder and bicarb and cocoa and stuff in there too. So because we have so much storage in this pantry, this is where I keep our sandwich press and our camping, what do you call that? Not utensils, our camping something. Plates? Let me know if there's another description there. And then here, this box is specifically for flour. This is where I think we had the pantry moth problem in the past because I used to have drawers that slid open and shut, like standalone snack drawers, but they weren't airtight. So I think we had one little moth and it just went crazy. So now I keep all my flour in an airtight container and it has to stay in here. I used to buy like four or five bags of flour thinking, oh, I'm going to use it this week. And then it would just sit out in the open and now I can't buy more flour if this is full. So it's kind of like a try and keep baking Marissa under control. This is rice and pasta and noodles. If this is full, I don't need to buy any more. And underneath our floor area, this is the dog food. Because if you keep a big packet of dog food, it's just dry dog food. If we keep a massive packet of that, the smell tends to attract the cat and it gets into it. So stool for the kids to stand on. I just like to slide it in and out easily. So we try and make it fit there. It's a bit grubby, the feet go on it, but oh well. And this is where we have onions and garlic and potatoes. Okay, that's it. Whew. I'm going to flip you back over now. Hi, I'm back. So that is a realistic look at our pantry. It doesn't have a ton of fancy storage options anymore because the pantry moth issue was the big one and that was relatively recently that we made that change. Um, and you might have noticed it's not really, really full of stuff. It's not, you know, there's not weeks and weeks of, um, what's it called when it's not perishable? Do you know that word? If something's not perishable, you can keep it for a long time. I feel like there's a word, non-perishable, is that the word? We don't have a lot of non-perishable items in stock and really that's for two reasons. Number one is budget. We'd like to keep to a really small weekly budget because I find if we go over budget, I tend to stock up on things that we never end up using by the time their use by date has gone past. So it's great for the budget if I don't stock and hoard. 
but it's also really good in that we don't accidentally damage goods or waste them or not not use them I find if we don't put heaps in our pantry then we use what's there because we can see it at a glance and my favorite trick when it comes to weekly grocery shopping when I'm in a massive hurry is to just open the pantry door and take a photo of it with my phone and then I know exactly what I've got when I do my shopping list without having to go back and forth to the kitchen. Joe says I have lots in my pantry like pasta, rice and tuna. Yeah, that's so non-perishables, right? Lol, well, I think we eat too much, lol. No. <laughs> no, don't worry, because every family is different. You put heaps in your containers and that's just it. Like we're all different. I find when I store a lot in my pantry, I get that sort of overwhelm, right? Where I just think, Okay, I've got so much stuff in there, but you know when you go to the shop and you've got eight different options to choose from out of one, say, brand of one type of cereal or something like that, and it's like your mind gets totally overwhelmed and it's really hard to make a decision because you're comparing everything? I think I get that when it comes to a personal pantry, when it's really, really well stocked. You know, you do get that sense of, ah, oh, we're covered if we ever need anything. But I get this real overwhelm feeling like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to use that in time. What if I make the wrong choice and I should have made another dinner choice? You know, I think I'm just one of those people who gets quite anxious about decision making and I get a lot of decision fatigue. Love the photo ID. Oh, thank you, Joe. Yeah, I find the photo helps a lot and I do it with the fridge as well because especially when the kids were little, when they were babies and toddlers, trying to go through the pantry and work out a shopping list and get interrupted five times and trying to do it with toddlers around my legs and, and crying babies and, you know, hungry kids who just think that the reason I'm in, I'm in the pantry is to give them a snack. Trying to do all of that was really hard. So taking a photo really helps. And if I'm going to be out for the day, then taking a photo in the morning helps. And then I can do the list if I'm, you know, in an office or at the library or in the food court before I start shopping. I can do the list there. I don't have to be home. Going to use that idea. Yay! Comment when you do it and let me know how you go. Can I send you? Yes, I would love. Joe. I would love a pick of your pantry. That would be great. And if anybody else wants to send a pick in, if you can upload it to the comments, go ahead. Feel free to message it if you want to. I don't often see messages come through because they have that filter now where... You know, you don't always see all of them, especially if it's a first message. So if I don't reply to your message, post it in the comments, because comments I see all the time. It might give people ideas. Yes, that's right, because we've all got different ideas, and what works for me might not work for you, but what works for Joe might work for all of the rest of you. So in the light of that idea, anybody else, if you have ideas on how you organize your pantry and you want to share them with our viewers, then feel free to post it because I think the more the merrier when it comes to ideas, right? It's like that whole, it takes a village. We should build our own village here and share ideas here. You had to block behind your pantry. It must be huge. Nothing wrong with that. How do you post a pic? All right, you should be able to post one in the comments. If you can't post one in the comments, send me a message on Facebook and I'll post it on your behalf and I'll tag you. I'm going to go on the computer this afternoon, oh, it's probably going to be late afternoon, and go through any messages and post any pictures that appear in messages then. So Joe, try in the comments. We should let you do a picture or a GIF or anything like that, so do it there. Way too deep. <laughs> it's a pain. Oh no. I think with my pantry, it's quite handy that it's big but I can walk straight into it because when the kids want to play hide and seek... I hope they're not watching. No, they're at school. That's where I hide because I can eat Tim Tams while we're hiding. But that's just a little extra trick. All right, I better go. It's been really nice talking to you guys. I haven't done it enough this year. I want to do it more. I'm going to do a few more things on things like meal planning and um, encouraging kids to eat their dinner because I've got a lot of little hacks that work really, really well. Especially if you've got kids from babies through to the end of primary school. High school kids I have no experience with, so I really can't talk about that. But I will tell you what works in my house when it comes to younger kids, um, cooking meals, making it a little less stressful, fitting it in with your budget. So I'll do some more um, posts on that and videos on that. You PM me the pic. Great, Joe, thank you. Okay, everybody, I'm going to get going. It was nice to see you all again, and I will see you next time. Bye.